Okay, today I have something very special for you guys. Uh, this is on a map called Lakeside, and this is an Average Joe's game. Uh, so far, I have only really casted very good players, the, uh, the top of the community. And, uh, but in this game, you will get to see how an Escalation game plays out uh, when uh, in the hands of scrubs like me. Uh, no, I, I'm just uh, being a little silly. Uh, what I'm uh, what I'm really saying is that the the uh, level of the skill level of this game is not at the uh, the same uh, level that uh, I'm sure you guys are all used to on this channel. But uh, on the on the other side, you'll get to see me play. Uh, here I am in the top left, the uh, arm, the red arm commander, and in the bottom right we have the pink core commander, Lester. Um, I haven't played Escalation for very long, so I'm still there's I'm still learning a lot of things. But uh, as you can see here, I'm just reclaiming some trees, building some wind generators. Wind was very good on this map. It was like I think it was something crazy, like. Um, 15 to 30 something like that so uh, I made a mistake even building these solar generators early on and uh, but uh, uh, Me and this guy were pretty evenly matched. I have to say this map is called lakeside. I had never played on it before but it's a uh, It's pretty interesting. Uh, there's a land bridge here in the middle so units can walk through I didn't quite realize that at the time uh, there's also some deep parts here with some underwater metal spots, if you can see them. So, yeah. Interesting map. Uh, I certainly enjoyed playing on it and uh, probably play on it again. I, th I think it's kind of cool. Pretty neat design because hovercrafts still are decent. Uh, Lester with this group of AKs. Now going to make their way up the left side of the map, I think. And uh, here on this plateau, I have a few metal extractors and an LLT. I also have a warrior that just completed building. And uh, warriors very, very good against AKs. They will kind of uh, chew them up, eat them alive, choose your alliteration. So uh, I'm trying to block this AK group here and uh, Lester going to bring his AKs onto this plateau, take out my construction vehicle, but uh, this LLT and these warriors should be good enough to clean those up, but still a very good by him. He took out three metal spots and a constructor, so overall I'd say that was pretty successful because now I have to rebuild uh, a construction K-Bot and uh, do this all over again. So yeah, early on it certainly feels like Lester already pulling ahead. You can just see he has, uh, he's at about 20 metal per second to my 13. And uh, here a battle in the mid uh, between warriors and AKs and crashers. So overall uh, warrior is going to be pretty strong against most T1 units if they can get in range. Uh, Lester building some Roccos here to uh, kind of keep my warriors at bay. Warriors are very short ranged and uh, not that fast either, but they are very, very tanky. And so uh, they're good if you can get them into range of your opponent's units or, or base, as we can see here, taking out that construction K-Bot. But the MAKs are the core equivalent, and those should be more than sufficient to push those warriors back. And, uh, yeah, my opponent here, uh, he is just on the K-Bot game plan with some wind generators. He's got quite a few. And working on his Geo. And uh, I have to say, throughout this game, Lester did a really good job of building a ton of defenses all over the place. You can see here he's got four light laser towers. Um, he's got some light laser towers here and uh, he's building pulverizers here and uh, he was just much better than me at defending the areas that he had already captured. Now I have finished this geo uh, at the top left and uh, so I finished that before him so I, I do think I kind of have 
a uh, small uh, energy lead and now we are both equal on metal again after I rebuilt those metal spots and uh, moving east here with another warrior attack I'm gonna take out that metal spot and uh, here uh, Lester moving forward with uh, his Roccos and an MIK and uh, a couple of LLTs just not going to be enough to defend against that. Uh, I do kind of find his main base, but he just has too much stuff for me to deal with, I think. Too many MAKs, so I'm going to kind of run away from that. And uh, he's sending a little raiding force here, and uh, but I do have four warriors, which should be able to handle that. But... Uh, yeah, here in the bottom, I run into this uh, wall of LLTs with my warriors, and uh, I will clean this up. So, uh, yeah, overall, the game has started out pretty even. Uh, it seems like Lester's still on just K-Bots, unless there's something else. And uh, I have now advanced to Hovercraft. Now, the main reason I advanced to Hovercraft was just so I could get these underwater metal spots I felt like uh, that was going to be free metal uh, throughout the game unless he built something to uh, counter those and uh, those require specialized counters to that can have sonar that can shoot underwater so I felt like yeah building those would be uh, a benefit for me a building hovercraft would give me quite an economic uh, boost and uh, it did it was I think a decent choice but uh, yeah, he's still only on K-Bot, and I don't know where he's investing all of his metal. He's got 41 metal per second. I think he's just building defenses with it. He's got the uh, Gat here, building a Gat here. He's got a Gat here, surrounding it with Dragon's Teeth. And uh, me now moving to the east with a group of Anacondas and Warriors. Uh, Anacondas, the, uh, the main battle hover tank. They are uh, quite impressive, I think, overall. They're kind of like floating stumpies, in a way, except they have even more health, and I think they have a larger AoE. But, uh, yeah, Anaconda's uh, quite a force to deal with, but this is what I'm talking about. Lester built this really impressive defensive line there, and uh, it's going to be defending that whole area, so it's hard for me to even get back there. And if you look at my base, it's barely defended at all. This is one of my weaknesses as a player. I just am not so good at fortifying my positions. And uh, so he's going to bring this raiding force of MAKs and Storms to uh, take all of that out. And meanwhile, he's going to fortify this area and make a, a little mini base in the bottom left. And uh, I didn't even know that was happening because I don't have radar down there. So, uh, yeah, just looking at the map, he certainly has better map control. He, uh, he's taken over most of the right side and this uh, little, uh, little structural foundation here. And uh, me, on the other hand, I'm trying to get some damage done, but uh, yeah, Lester just kind of got defense everywhere, it feels struggling to break through and uh, I will luckily run into this advanced K-Bot lab and stop that so delaying his T2 advance is uh, very important. I've also got some anacondas here but uh, those are going to run into a lot of defense and uh, as I said Lester was very good throughout this match at building uh, good defensive positions that made it hard to get any kind of harassment done and uh, me on the other hand uh, not <laughs> not doing as well as you can see uh, I do have some metal spots I am reclaiming the ones that were killed but uh, not uh, not really doing a great job of uh, beefing up those areas I will ultimately take out that gap but you know if I had built 
Uh, some gats myself, or some sentinels, surrounded by dragon's teeth. I think uh, it would have been a very different game for me. So, uh, yeah, that is uh, something I definitely have to work on. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Lester moving forward with this army of instigators and MAKs. So. Uh, I'm now on air. I've built some scouts. I'm just going to try to figure out what uh, Lester is doing. And I do have to say, at this point in the game, I like my army composition more than his. Uh, these Anaconda kind of act like a frontline tank, while these Rockos can push out the DPS at a range, and the uh, the Jethro is acting as a to give vision. Um, Anacondas do hit in a small AOE, while all of his units can only hit a single target. So uh, these Anaconda uh, should be pretty decent at taking out uh, squads of units because uh, these shots will, like I said, hit in a small AOE and hit multiple instigators or MAKs at once while being very hard to kill. As you can see, uh, lost one with a single, oh no, I guess he has two, but these two construction K-Bots have built a whole base down here at the bottom left. I definitely could learn from his example. Um, imagine if I had Built my own defenses here to uh, protect that area. Or uh, built some defenses here to protect the bridge. Here and here, perhaps. Uh, this area, I probably don't need to build defenses because it's so close to my production. But uh, yeah, I needed defenses all over the map, really. Uh, I am now building the uh, signature OP unit, the MAV. These are, uh, according to some, uh, <laughs> extremely overpowered right now. And uh, uh, I guess we'll see. I'm, I'm breaking through now onto the uh, top right part of the base. And I'm uh, going to take out that little expansion. And uh, Lester, with two Construction K-Bots, is going to uh, take this whole area as well. And uh, yeah, Lester also was building Dominators throughout this game, and these were extremely effective and hard to deal with. They kind of outrange my entire composition right now. And uh, are in some ways like Super Rockos or, or uh, Super Storms. They, uh, they outrange most things in the game, and uh, they do a really insane amount of damage. And uh, they can be used to kite. Uh, luckily, Lester's micro was not the best, so I was often able to close the distance on these and take them out. Um, but uh, in the hands of a, of a professional player, uh, the Dominators can be quite scary and hard to deal with. So uh, again, though, uh, Lester still having a better, I think, better hold of the map. He's got, uh, he's now building another Geo down here. And uh, me, I've got some construction planes trying to take over the north and uh, reclaim as much metal as I can. Uh, back at my base, I have this uh, aircraft plant. I have the hovercraft platform, and I have the advanced KBOT lab. My opponent, uh, now on advanced K-Bots, upgrading his Mohos and with this Geo here. But uh, yeah, what I've done is built a Guardian here because uh, that defense I didn't even want to deal with. I didn't want to bring units down from this force that was already having a hard enough time breaking through these defenses and defending my base. I didn't want to bring this force uh, 
down here. So I just instead built a guardian and uh, took it out that way by using the radar blips. Uh, I could just see on the radar, I'd select my guardian and then uh, just click on right, uh, shift click to kill everything. So uh, that's how I dealt with that bottom left base. And then I was able to uh, build a new one. So uh, not the most pro way of dealing with it. Certainly I probably could have just built some bombers uh, and that would have eventually dealt with it. I don't think my opponent is on air at all. But uh, yeah, again, you can see here, I've taken these uh, this area of the map, but I haven't really defended it. Though at the same time, I'm not even sure defending, you know, building defenses would be worth it against these Dominators. Dominators outrange uh, both light laser towers, I think, and heavy laser towers. And uh, I'm not even sure how strong defenses would be there. At this point, I think I'm just better building those metal spots, and if they kill them, I just fly a few more planes over and build them again. That was kind of my thinking there, but there's really no excuse for not building defense at the bottom. Uh, if Lester had sent any kind of raiding force uh, into like the southern portion of the map, um, that would have been very tough to deal with because, uh, again, it's not very well defended. And uh, Lester doing a good job with these, uh, these gats surrounded by uh, dragon's teeth. Those will push back at most kinds of, especially T1 advancements, but also many T2 units, like they're, they're great against Mavericks, for example. And uh, you really need specific units to counter this type of defensive uh, setup. But uh, me now building a second Guardian, again, the whole idea is uh, instead of having to divert forces from my main army, I can just build a guardian and take this stuff out the slow way, but uh, outranging all of his stuff. And uh, here again, you can see these dominators. It's a single gat here in the back, pushing out some damage. How many kills does this thing have? 10 kills already, so a very effective defensive emplacement there. I was definitely struggling to deal with it. 11 kills now. Certainly worth its weight in gold. And uh, back in the base, I have gone T2 Air. I'm now building some Phoenix. Sending some scouts in to see what's going on. I see that he has a Geo and an advanced Kbot lab right beside one another. That feels like a juicy bombing target to me. And uh, now that I'm watching the replay, I was kind of interested to see how he was doing economically. Uh, it, it does look like I'm ahead economically. Perhaps I just have uh, these underwater metal extractors are certainly helping. Uh, I do have some Moho extractors as well, building more of those. And uh, in the top, Lester going to push with this army of cans and dominators into my army of Fidos and anacondas. And that will be a uh, pretty interesting engagement here. Again, uh, these anacondas, I was very impressed with them throughout the match. They just seem to be very well rounded and uh, really good in combination with Fidos because uh, the anacondas can kind of tank. In the front, all the Fidos uh, push out their massive ranged DPS, these uh, volley cannons in the back. But uh, I am going to uh, run into this gat wall and uh, be forced to retreat. Oh, this must be my view. Hang on. This gat now on 13 kills. So again, uh, Luster, very good at defending. I'm sending another scouting force in. And uh, yeah, Luster probably knows something's coming. He's building a, a, a metric ton of pulverizers, but uh, it is too late. I have already begun the bombing run. I think I perhaps telegraphed this bombing run a little too much. But uh, either way, try, I'm shooting for this Geo. I only have four uh, 
Phoenix. And I am able to get it just in time. Uh, if I had better bomber control, if I was uh, a pro, uh, I probably could have taken out uh, actually both the advanced k lab and the geo. Or if I'd come from a different angle, like let's say I'd come from the top and come down so that my bomber hits uh, both targets, I might have been able to, to get both there. But uh, yeah, that just is kind of a sign of my inexperience. That, uh, that, yeah, I, uh, I do not have the best bomber control. And, uh, you can see, if you've watched my other games, how strong good bomber control can be. Versus what you just saw with me, where I took out one Geo, when I most certainly could have taken out more. But, uh, yeah, that is part of the reason I love Escalation, is there is such a, a massive skill ceiling. And, uh, the difference between a good player and an average player is, uh, well, it's, it's quite significant, but uh, in the meantime, now with this Guardian, I'm going to uh, slowly take out his base at a range. Again, this is not the most efficient way of taking out your opponent's defensive uh, operations here. He does have three Gats surrounded by Dragon's Teeth and building a fourth one. So this isn't the most efficient way, but uh, he does not have Pulverizers, so it would be a little harder to bomb that. Though if I had good bomber control, I could probably just take out this whole row in a single in a single sweep. But uh, yeah, my opponent now building uh, a doomsday machine here in the front. Doomsday machine, uh, the uh, the core T two kind of omni defense, and uh, that will make it very hard to assault his base. But uh, in the meantime, back at my base, I'm just building more bombers here. And uh, building a repulsor, that is the the uh, ARM T2 tactical nuke structure. With my thought being that uh, his base now is, has so much defense uh, that uh, I would do very well, I think, to just kind of uh, nuke nuke him from afar and that would be probably easier than trying to break through all this defense and uh, here in the bottom uh, I believe I didn't have sufficient radar coverage to see this stuff so uh, yeah that guardian is just gonna kind of sit there and be useless for now because I can't uh, I can't see it but I am gonna send some more scouts forward and uh, those are going to be Quickly cleaned up, uh, Lester pushing forward with some cans, but uh, my current composition of uh, Anacondas and Phytos, very strong against cans, uh, shouldn't be much of a problem. And uh, this tactical nuke, now done, the tactical uh, nuke silo done, and working on a fusion. I did bring these bombers. And uh, not even getting that second metal extractor. Again, I'm not, I don't have the best control. But, uh, yeah, here in the, in the top, I am still trying to break through all this defense, but not doing a great job. That's kind of why I built the, built the repulsor. Felt like I needed another game plan to uh, win the game since I wasn't likely going to break through this defensive line anytime soon. So, uh, yeah, here in the bottom left, uh, I feel kind of silly for not building a radar because I, I, I could have most likely killed all of this stuff by now if I just had a radar. Uh, the idea was to bring these anacondas south and try to attack this base. And uh, Lester now moving forward with sumos.
Yeah, just finished my fusion. And uh, let's look at the income here. I am on like, uh, looks like about 120 metal per second and he's on 112. So uh, economically we're pretty close. No player way ahead at this point. But uh, this repulsor will finish and that nuke is going to fly into his base and kind of take out everything. So uh, yeah, very good tactical nuke there. Certainly getting done what I had hoped and now bringing some brawlers down to uh, try to take out this pesky base. This guardian now finally firing again. Now that it can see targets. But uh, even the guardian going to struggle to take out these gats. They are uh, quite tanky, quite difficult to kill. And uh, surrounding his doomsday machine with fortification walls to make it even tougher than before. And uh, he is now working on his own fusion. And I'm working on my second fusion. So Yeah, this single brawler going to uh, continue attempting to kill that gat, but uh, ultimately not able to with this group of pulverizers in the back. I will attempt to take out these pulverizers now. But uh, there's more, there's even more pulverizers here in the south. So, uh, yeah. Lists are doing a good job of spacing out his pulverizers so that it's uh, hard for me to deal with. And uh, I'm going to send a group of scouts forward. Uh, Lester now building an anti-nuke, which is going to make it harder to uh, get another successful nuking operation done. And uh, another tactical nuke there, but uh, not the most efficient this time. But uh, still, it hit a few things. And uh, now pushing through with this force of Anacondas, Phytos, and Jethros. Uh, sumos are strong, but uh, they're not that strong. This is a lot of stuff. And uh, I finally walked down the left here. This Doomsday Machine was almost finished. But I will take that out. And I will take out this gat. Here in the bottom, I've got some brawlers that uh, are going to slowly clean that up as well. And uh, now I am in the main base of Lester. And uh, things are not working too well for him. He just calls the GG. Yeah, I found his fusion. And, uh, yeah, he's going to tap out. So anyway, that is kind of how that game went. That is how an average Joe's game looks. Certainly, I'm sure, not as exciting or as action-packed as a game between two pros. But uh, just to give you an insight onto uh, what an average game looks like of Escalation and uh, what was going through my head as I played. But uh, overall, very fun, and uh, I'm still learning. Like I said, I haven't been playing it very long. I've played all manner of, of Total Annihilation ever since 1997 when it came out, so I have a, a ton amount of experience with the game, but uh, playing Escalation specifically uh, has been a learning curve, And uh, but I really enjoy it, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching that. So uh, thank you for watching.